Well, assalamu alaikum. So here I have built this app using block and we use block not only for state management but also for routing, especially the routing part. A lot of time you may use third party plugin, but here I'll show you actually you don't need any plugin to do routing in block. It's a very simple idea how routing works in Flutter app itself. If you know that, then you'd know you'll find that actually it's very easy with block. Of course, everything over here, basic routing, whatever you will see, it will happen using block. You can go back like sign up or you can come to a sign in page once you are here from your onboarding screen. So I'm going to go ahead and log in over here using my account, the one that I have created. All right. So just now we saw sign up page that was done the routing using block. Now we are going to say login and this has also been done using block. So now we are logging in. So now we are on our home page and after that actually we can go to different tabs. This is our personal center. Now let me show you the more routing that I have done. Of course the app is still being built so there are a lot more work to be done. So here we also have routing as you can see. Now we can go back. Now this is a search page but we are still working on this. And then over here your settings page. And of course you can go ahead and log out so yeah routing could be done using block so i want you to see carefully and then you'll understand how it works now i want you to take a look at this class here which is called app pages and here i have this list now if you take a look at this list and if you're coming from getx background you'll see it feels like that it's pretty much the routes in getx where you define all of your routes in a list so this is exactly the same thing I have done over here. But in this case, actually, I'm not using getx. Actually, I'm using block. Take a closer look. This pretty much all looks like getx, right? Where you have your path or your route name and your screen or page. Now over here, I the, the different thing I have done over here is that over here, I also created a property which is called block. Now instead of block, actually, it takes a block provider. Now block provider we use to create blocks. Like for example, this is my welcome block. Welcome block has event and states, so as simple as that one. If you go to sign in block, actually over here, I also have event and state. And inside this actually just a block that has been created for sign in request. So whatever your pages or routes name, they all should go ahead with a block where you create the block using block provider. And all of your pages are inside this list. I would say all of your routes are inside this list. Now, you know, you may wonder what is this page entity? Actually, page entity is over here. This is just a simple class, more like a model, which takes the path or your routes name and your page, which is a widget or a screen, right? and our block that's how we create object now this object over here it is consist of over here path page and block so we return the list over here right so it's just a list a list of blocks now after that actually we want to inject this blocks or actually block provider in our main.dart since we are using block to do that, first I wrapped my app using multi-block provider. Now we know that multi-block provider has a provider's parameter, which takes a list of providers or list of blocks actually. Now, what is this? Actually, this browser, the one that I created over here is this one. What it does, actually it returns all these blocks, the one that we created in the list in a list now you may ask why you just directly don't return this list up there now the problem with this list is that th these are objects but I don't want to return objects all I want I want to return blocks so that's why over here actually we created a method which is called blosser now over here I have created a list a dynamic list and I take all the list, the list that I've created at the top, 
and then I loop through them. And as I loop through, I just add the blocks or the block provider in this list. Once the for loop is done, and then we just return it. And as we return, we can actually inject our block providers in our main.dart inside this multi-block provider. So that's the first step. And actually, we're very close to be done with this concept, the one that I'm introducing, like use blocks, pure blocks to do routing, no plugins. The last step, actually, this is called on generate route. Now, what is this? Now, we know that actually over here it says that it's a callback, right? It's generated when you navigate in your app, when your navigation happens through named route. Now, of course, you see that over here our routes these are actually named routes because these are all string actually so these are named routes so what i did over here i created a callback function now let's take a look so this is the callback function now this callback function also actually works a little bit like a middleware why because we do a lot of things a lot of checkings over here now the callback function the name is generate route settings as you can see Okay, now this callback function, actually I bind it here or I assign it to on generate route. So this callback function is same page or same class as you can see in app pages, actually. So this is over here. Now, if you wonder where are my routes name, routes name are actually over here in app routes, as you can see. So these are just basic strings that we are returning. Anyway, so now let's go ahead and take a look at this callback function. So the callback function actually what it does, it takes parameter which is called route settings. Now this is a built-in class in Flutter so you don't have to worry about it. All it does is checking with your routing. So whatever the route you go to, so it can take the route and if it can take, we grab it in this object which is called settings. You can name it anything. So all we do over here, we check if this is null or not. If this is not null, actually from this list over here, remember routes is the list at the top. This is the list at the top. So we go through it and we check if the route that we are navigating to, if this is in this list over here, if this is there, of course it will match one of the path and the route name that we are trying to navigate. And then we do a basic conditional check and if the check works actually we go to the certain route that we are supposed to go all right if this is not null but of course you could go anywhere you like based on this the idea i'm trying to say when you navigate then definitely route settings would catch which named route you are going to and then we just check it and after checking, you may go to certain route as you want. So you can check whether the user has logged in or not. If the user has logged in, then you can, so if the user has logged in, you can go to your dashboard or application page, or you can go to somewhere else. Or if none of this property is true over here, you just go where you are supposed to go. So this is also just basic navigating using material page route. So if you want to use block for routing, so I would suggest go ahead and create a list of objects. The object itself should have your block provider inside, which corresponds to each class or screen with a certain block. And after that, you should create a loop and in the loop, actually you just get blocks from the objects remember this routes class this routes method over here it returns list of objects so from the objects we just get our block and then we return the block as we return we put it inside our providers inside multi-block provider and then once that is done once that is done you also create a callback function the callback function checks which route you are supposed to go so that's how actually basic routing works with block without any plugin if you liked it don't forget to subscribe and push that like button thank you